the NPC has retained the NPR at 13.5%, CRR at 22.5%, and liquidity ratio are at 30%. Now, Nigeria's economic growth slowed in the first quarter of this year, creating concerns about poverty in Africa's largest economy and the most populous nation. Uh, and now the fall in GDP growth rate came after the oil sector. The, oh, that's the biggest uh, foreign exchange earner contracted. Gross domestic product expanded by 2.01%. Well, I have in the studio the Director General of Franco Nigeria Chamber of Commerce, uh, Mr. Omaru or Moses, is here to put us to perspective and get all of this right. Thank you very much for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Nice uh, to uh, uh, let me start this way. The CBN's um, MPC meeting, the outcome, was it expected or did you expect any change? Yeah, actually, before now, we have been advocating for a reduction in the cash reserve ratio. Um, because the last time in other platforms I've mentioned that um, the banks are not actually lending to the private sector, which of course is a booster to economic development and all of that. So what we expected the CBN to do was to look at the CRRO. We said that they should reduce it by maybe 2.5 basis points um, and then and take it to 20% and state by policy that... 2% of this amount to be taken to the private sector because we understand that um, the commercial banks are not lending to the private sector. What they do with these funds is that they take these funds and get treasury bills. But Gordon Mifle currently mentioned that um, there's a policy in place to ensure that they would restrict commercial banks and microfinance banks from buying treasury bills. But at the end of the day, that affects banks' um, 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 bottom line, but yeah. does that affect economic development in the long run? I do not think so. So, um, well, they have said that they are looking at um, uh, the fact that this thing, yeah, they are observing the economy, but I think right now we need injection in the circular flow of income. We oh. must ensure that um, funds are into uh, this place. When we talk about this trickling down to the man on the streets, because we look at how this will impact the man on the street, um, these figures, most, uh, most people don't really understand what it means. Now, letting the banks lend more money to the real sector, yes. to the formal and in, you know, to just to, to small businesses and all of that. I think that could actually help jumpstart uh, this economy. What do you think? Of course, from Tikudan hypothesis, it states that when funds are into the circular flow of income, there is job creation, there is productivity, there is manufacturing and there is industry. So that's mm -hmm. exactly what we are advocating for. If there are more funds for, most especially the SMEs, definitely these SMEs will employ more people, these SMEs will manufacture more, there will be more production and there will be more expenditure in the economy. So right now, currently, everything is going to be stable. We expect that the economy might not necessarily have any, any kick going forward and all of that. Indeed, I, I'm also worried about disruption of the global scenes. We know what is happening with the US-China trade war. We know what's been happening internationally and how that affects us in this part of the world. We still depend more than 80% of our revenue from crude oil. What do you think, what effect do you think this would have on the entire African continent? Uh, currently, are you talking about the MPC? Yes, the MPC? no, the, the, I'm the, talking about this trade war, global issues, crude oil price and all of that. Okay. It's going to actually affect the economy negatively. And these projections made by the CBN is predicated on all of this. Well, most especially if, if, if you look at the trade war between um, um, U.S. and, and Iran and China currently and all of that, the, the um, development between the U.S. and Iran and all of that, it affects more with portfolio investors and not necessarily foreign direct investors yes. in the economy. So if you look at, it's going to affect more. If you look at our stock market, for example, fine, we have been recording gains, but the gains are from MT and Nigeria. Yeah. If you look at other stocks, other stocks are actually dropping and all of that. So if you look at it critically, it's affecting portfolio investors as against you know, real investors in the economy. So I don't think it's going to have so much impact as far as real investment in the economy is concerned. Say. Let's go back to the GDP performance now and seeing what has happened, 2.01%. Yes. That's actually a decline from what we had earlier. But some are saying maybe because of the elections and we are rating inauguration and maybe by moving forward, what did you, how did it hit you, 2.01%? 2 2.01% is an interesting result. If you look at year-on-year -year comparison, quarter on quarter comparison there is a decline definitely you, we, we ended fourth quarter 2.38 percent 2.01 percent compared to 1.89 percent in the first quarter of 2018 is a positive result and this is the best result we've had since 2015 first quarter but what i'm saying now if you look at um, the non-oil non-oil continues to grow 
2.47%. There is a continuous growth. I think this is the fifth consecutive quarter where we have the non-oil sector growing. What that shows is that the diversification agenda of the current government is exactly yielding results. And even the oil sector, of course, there is a decline, 2.40%, which is not even good for the economy. But that's the thing. But the thing is this, if you look at manufacturing growth, service, growth, transportation, a bit of growth there and all of that bit of growth. But what we are advocating for from the Franco Nigerian Chamber of Commerce is this, that this growth we are experiencing uh, experiencing currently are exogenously determined. It is tied to the price of oil at the end of the day. So for example now, currently Brent is, I, I just saw the report, 72.1%, sorry, 72.1 dollar yeah, currently for, for Brent. So now, the thing is this, if the oil price at any point in time goes down, it's going to affect every sector and it is possible that Nigeria will go back to a recession. So what we are That's saying, my worry too. What we are saying now is this, that the government should look. If you are going to talk about sustainability, you must talk about sustainability that you can control. Once you cannot control your sustainability, it is a whole lot of risk. We need to look more into the oil sector. For example, if you look at the aggregate GDP, 3.19%, uh, 80% of the agricultural GDP is from crop production. The value chain from production alone is less than 6% of the whole value chain as far as it, this sector is concerned. So we can look at more, okay, let there be value creation from our agricultural produce. So we don't have to depend on oil again. I see mentioned about the tickle down hypothesis. The same way these things work, you earn 80% from oil, which is your foreign reserve against the race. Now you have to defend the Naira. Now you have to make sure Forex is available for businesses, manufacturers. So the manufacturing growth we are experiencing now is as a result of Forex availability. Yeah, so if window. that goes, we are going back to where we're coming from. So <laughs> the economy currently is externally determined. Our growth is externally determined. And that is what we need to watch. We need to watch it. So we, how we can watch it is to ensure that we look at the non oil sector and ensure that we don't just produce agricultural produce, we create value from agriculture. I think that's the way we can go about it. Oil sector actually contracted when we look at that figure. W what's happening? What's strange? Why, why did we have that? If you look at the volume, the, uh, the volume produced currently is 1.9, 1, 1 million. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's that's true. there was actually a drop in the yeah, volume produced. Of course, so definitely we just looked at it and said, okay, this is where the problem is coming from. That's where the decline came well, from. Well, Reserve yeah. is still at 45 billion US dollars as we speak today. Yes. Our external Reserve continues to like get on the positive why side. Because, why? Because the price of crude oil is going up. It comes to grow up. For example, if you look at uh, our budget, for example, our budget assumption for crude oil 60. is 60. So we ha even, even for the excess crude oil account, so we are making more money we now. We are making more money now. <laughs> and now is the time to ensure that this excess money that has been made is into the oil oil are sector. Are saving for the rainy days? Uh, no, it is the oil. It is the same oil that will take us away from this problem. <laughs> so we must ensure that we take these funds into the right sector and then we can start the economy running. But currently, once it is exogenously determined, it, there is always fear. It's not sustainable. If something happens outside, and we're, we, we understand Iran and um, yeah. Iraq, and then we're talking about cutting the OPEC deal and the rest of them for mo most, of, uh, most OPEC states and all of that. So there is already a bombshell coming up. Uh, we don't want to create tension, basically, but the truth is we must ensure that we focus on what we can control. Once it's external to us, we can control it. That's how we fell back in the recession before. We're well, talking, talking about what government needs to do now. Many are saying that there should be some very... Uh, stringent, if I can use that word, policies. We, there needs to be some, we need to some decisive steps. We need to, we need to, we need to really, really grab the bull by the horn, like it's always said. We need to do some things that will really make us achieve this kind of growth that we want. One of it is the issue of subsidy, which has been an, it's been a topic of discourse. Should we retain subsidy? Should we remove subsidy? Now. What are the expectations? What are the quick wins? You have to talk to, talk to government now. Where do you think they should look at? Uh, if you look at the American economy, for example, um, upon the global meltdown in 2007-2008, there was a system called quantitative easing, where funds were injected into the system. I cannot imagine, I'm sorry, I cannot imagine currently the MPC meeting was held just yesterday and you are retaining the CRR at 22.5%. You are not injecting into the system. If you want industry, if you want to ensure that there is more jobs are created, infrastructure in the economy, you must inject funds into the system. It's not necessarily about subsidy. Subsidy, subsidy is because we are, we are an oil producing country. 
and that's the and benefit. And we don't refine. And we don't refine. So um, uh, anyway, Dangote refinery coming on board. We yes, are waiting for that. It's it's coming on board soon. Anyway, you get back. You won't be monopolized one way or the other. Uh, no, 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 no. I I I do not think. Let's so. go. I do not think. It's so. going to be a discussion for another day. I, of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> so quantitative easing from the CBN. Okay. From even. Other policy, um, other other um, agencies of government is very very important at this point in time. Funds has to be running through the system. Funds are not running through the system, so you cannot have activity. That's the problem. I, I want us to look at agriculture. Yes, good. In layman's understanding of agriculture. Yes. Now we we're trying to invest more in that sector, but we we are yet to even feed ourselves as a nation. Before we now talk about exporting, we try to export yam. Yes. We partly got our fingers burnt. We got some rejected standards. We got some beans. Now some of our other pro farm produce rejected. Yes, standards. Now, how do we start? Many say we need mechanized farming. How well are we investing in the agricultural sector, and how can we get it right? I think what we need to do in the agricultural sector is this, and I'm, I'm going to give an example. Um, Fine. Just um, March of this year, we had delegates from France that came to Nigeria with agricultural technology and machineries. We need to look at partnership. See. We mm. can't do this on our own. We need to first of all agree that it's not our business to get us out of this mess we are as far as agriculture is concerned. We need tech, we need machineries to be able to ensure that this sector is... Because, if it, like for example, now you just mentioned something, talking about the yams we exported and they were reformed yeah. or, 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 or returned back yeah. and the rest of them, is because of the standards and all of that. So exactly. we, can, we need to have partnerships with most EU countries, most agricultural players like Adepta and the rest of them to ensure that this sector is put on the balance so we can take it off from there. It's not, it's not our business necessarily. It's not even government's business to run this business of agriculture. It's a very big sector. It's, I mean, it's massive. This is our next oil and we need to do it with international standards. We need to do it and do it right. Hmm. Well, uh, almost finally now, uh, yeah. the economic recovery and growth plan is one beautiful document that everybody keeps talking about. I was talking about this yesterday on the show when we we're analyzing this, looking at the projections as we move on because we expect the inauguration and everybody expects this government to get and get running, not like everybody else wants. Just like yesterday, yes. we want the government to already start running. Now, this document, I know you've seen it, you've, been, you've, you've gone through it. Uh, let's look at implementation. Many are worried that that is always the challenge we have in this part of the world proper implementation of documents and policies like this. How well would you say uh, we have done before now, we are yet to pass the budget, and other documentation when it comes to... So how well do you think we would implement ERGP? Uh, I, I, uh, for ERGP, I want to congratulate the Federal Government of Nigeria for the implementation currently. Even our rating on the ease of doing business ranking, you yes. can see it. Getting yes. electricity, yes. Um, obtaining permits, and the rest of them. What we are advocating for is sustainability. It's not, implementation is already on board. Most of the things, if you, for example, now if you want to register your business, you go to CAC website, we have tried this. We try it at times, just, we just intentionally do those things and just try those things and all of that. It works. These mm -hmm. are things that are working. Visa on arrival, it works. These are things that we have tested and these things are working. But are we going to sustain it? If you look at our latest um, um, rankings, ease of doing business ranking, a state was mentioned that they removed you know, some information from their website and that was why this ranking dropped and all of that. Sustainability is fundamental when it comes to policies. Here in Nigeria, it's very fundamental. So government should look at sustaining. If you want to start, ensure that you sustain these things and that's, and that's what we're advocating for. I know there are a lot of French companies, um, you know, not particularly mentioning one or, one or two companies, but yes. let's look at their relationship with Nigeria. You are the Director General of Franco Nigerian Chamber of Commerce. Yes. We know what Lagos State Chamber of Commerce has been doing and all of that. Now tell us, how's the relationship between French companies and Nigerian companies? How well are we at this synergizing? Beautiful, beautiful. Nigeria is the ninth largest trade partner of France. If you look at our trade figures in 2018, it's going straight to 46 billion um, euros and all of that so the relationship is getting better the relationship is even um as a result of macron's visit you know there, ah, there, there, there is a renewed optimism in the nigerian business environment so we get a lot of requests almost on the daily okay i want to go into the agricultural sector we're looking at technology and all of that infrastructure and the rest of them how do we go into this what are the great areas in nigeria and all that these are things we're dealing with on daily so there's a, a renewed optimism in the nigerian business environment which is very very positive which is very, very positive. And, and French investors are talking, touching every sector, agriculture, technology. Late, um, before now, it was oil and gas only. I don't want to mention names, but now renewable energies, green energy, and all of that, these things are coming on board. It's beautiful. Mr. Maru Moses, I must thank you. DG Franco, yeah. Nigerian Chamber of Commerce, thank you for spending your afternoon thank with us here, giving insight into all of it, almost like two, three topics we're able to put together. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your thank time. You it's nice thank having you on the show. Thank, thank you, you so much. much.